is electric. Morning everyone, welcome back for another video. Uh, I've just freshly washed and polished the car and just thought I'd head out for a little drive to see what efficiency I can get today in the Mini Electric. It's nice and warm, sunny weather. But I thought I'd set the cameras up and share with you something that's something that I've been doing for the last couple of months and I've been wanting to share with you for a while but I wanted to get used to the devices that I'm testing before I shared with you and that's these dash cams I've been thinking about installing a dash cam in the car for quite a while but maybe maybe for a different reason than you might consider putting a dash cam in your car I often have action cameras set up in the car I often have cameras I've got uh, two set up this morning and uh, what I've been thinking is, if I had a dash cam set up permanently, then I wouldn't have all this set up and I could just use it and I could use some of the video and it's got audio on it as well, so I can use it for my videos. That's what I'm thinking anyway. The other reason for thinking that I might be able to use a dash cam is the action cameras that I use and sometimes mount in the cars and look at the dash and those sort of things, they have a looping capability to act like dash cams as well. So if action cameras can look like dash cams, why can't a dash cam work like an action camera and provide some video for me? So that was my thinking. So I thought I would test dash cams from the video perspective to see is the video that it produces usable and what can I use it for? So I'm doing it for myself, not just reviewing the products, but I thought I'd share this little journey of testing dash cams with you. Now the first thing to say is, you know, what do you want a dash cam for? Now, I understand the primary reason is if you have an accident, you've got some evidence to prove what happened, and that can be very useful if it's not your fault for the accident. Um, but other than that, if you never have an accident and you install a dash cam, then you never really get to use it. So it doesn't really have a purpose until you have that accident. And they can be useful for reducing your insurance premiums too. So. What else can you use a dash cam for? And I thought, well, if you can reuse the video content, then post it online, then any interesting things that happened, you can do that as well. But that, that's a little bit odd, isn't it? Installing a dash cam to watch everybody else and watch for somebody making mistakes so you can share it online and have a laugh at it. A lot of people do share um, dash cam footage of things that happen, events. And I get it, you know, there was an incident uh, just the other week when we were on the way to Lincolnshire. Someone was overtaking a cyclist. They must have been doing 80 plus and uh, they came head on on the wrong side of the road towards us. And uh, I'll, sh I'll show you the video clip now. So, so this sort of thing is useful to capture and one of the things that I was thinking about was you know should I send that off to the police so the third thing is obviously if you see an accident and you want to help somebody else and therefore share the evidence that you've got of what happened in the accident so that can be useful as well but again is that a little bit odd that you're out on the prowl with all your cameras looking for things waiting for them to happen so that you can rescue them and say I saw it and here's my evidence yeah, I, mean, I suppose it's useful when it happens, but to preempt it and to want a dash cam for that purpose seems seems a little odd. So for me, a dash cam is for when you have that accident and basically it's something that you're never really going to use or the video is reusable. And that's, that's what I want to find out in my tests. Is the video content reusable? Is it any good? Now, I've been lucky enough to have two dash cams sent over to me, um, one by the Eye, um, and it's the one that's actually in the car at the moment, and one by Akio, a Japanese company. And I was very interested in that when they contacted me to see if I'd like to review it, because it's a 360 degree camera. I think, wow, 360 degree camera on a dash cam, I have not seen that before. I'm not really doing a review giving you all of the features between these two. What I want to do is give you my experience of trying them to start with and uh, what I've found is the major differences between them. Now the first thing to say, both of them are mirror dash cams. So they're not just a small unit, a camera that looks out and that's it, it plugs in and it just works. There is an interactive screen to it. So you've got this physical mirror. So this is actually the dash cam and the camera on the, the eye one sticks out of the side and it's actually movable, it slides in and out to adjust. Whereas the uh, Accio one is exactly the same mirror camera that sits on the front, but it's got a 360 camera that sticks underneath in the center. 
Now the first thing I noticed with the Accio one with the 360 camera is how much it can see. So it can see everything to the right, everything to the left, everything to the front and everything to the dash including down. Now obviously depending on where you angle the 360 camera depends on where the image comes. But with the camera pointing directly forwards it didn't give me an image of directly back to me. So weirdly what I could do is point the camera directly down at this uh, top of the dash here and then it would see me see out and see to the sides but the weird thing is with the uh, Accio one is this little sensor here that's underneath my actual mirror um, that is in the way of the camera so there is some of the field of view of the Accio one that's missing on looking out at uh, what's ahead of me Whereas the eye camera, which comes out at the side, misses all of the gubbins on my rain sensors and the mirror that's actually there. And because it's slidable and adjustable, the physical camera moves as to where you want to point it. That one, the eye, actually fits the car better. But let's start with price-wise when they arrived. Um, I got the, the, the I one and I thought it was a really good uh, quality looking box, a good quality looking camera and I'll put the price up in a moment. It was a hundred plus. It was not a cheap dash cam so I thought it was really good. But when the Accio one arrived it was a bigger box. It was heavier. The actual dash cam itself is much more substantial as an item. Much heavier and it's a good hundred pounds more expensive. Again I'll put the details on the screen and how much it's uh, for sale at. But it seemed a much more quality camera um, and setup. The Accio one came with a 360 camera underneath, a rear view camera that you can mount above to look into the car, or um, you can actually mount it at the back of the car on the uh, rear hatch of the car and it can act as a reversing camera and also just a rear sensing camera to record. But also, it's, it's got a side camera as well. It came with a third one. And that's for mounting under the wing mirror or on the side of your car, almost like the Tesla camera pod on a Tesla Model 3. But it also came with a GPS sensor and a hardwiring electric kit as well. So the Accio one came with everything, absolutely everything. Where the, whereas the, the i1 didn't come with the GPS sensor, didn't come with a hardwiring kit and didn't have the third camera, the one that I didn't want. They both came with a 32 gigabyte SD card. Now, the thing that I noticed with the Accio system was despite it being a 32 gigabyte SD card, because there's three cameras, it divided that into three and you basically got just under 10 gigabytes of storage for your video of your journey. And that didn't last for much more than an hour, hour and a half before it started overwriting files. And this is where I came to my first experience of using the dash cams. I had the Accio one set up um, just with the front-facing 360 camera, went out for a drive, it was a couple of hours drive and we had an incident on the first time that uh, we went out for a drive and so when we got to our destination about an hour and a half further on I thought I'd stop and have a look at the video and save it. So I presumed that you could go to the screen, you could look at your videos, see which one had the incident on it and then save it, protect it so that it didn't get overwritten as more videos were looping on the way back. But what I found was I could delete the videos which were in one minute segments or I could play them and have a look at them but I couldn't protect them. So the way that you protect a video in case an incident happened, it happens in two ways. One, you either have an accident and the G-force causes the device to protect it and save it, so it does that automatically. Or while you're driving along, you can tap the mirror and you can um, <laughs> tap the icon that's on the screen to protect that file. But it's a one minute file. So what happens if the incident happens at 50 seconds inside that video and then you go to your screen, you're clicking around and then you go to protect it, but it's now on the next file. You could have missed it. So in a one minute looping file, it seemed to me, one, you wouldn't catch a lot when you were protecting the file and two, there's a risk that you will actually miss it because it's such a small file. So the first thing to notice was I needed a much, much bigger SD card. The one that comes with it is absolutely useless you need at least let's say 128 gigabytes to be able to store enough of a couple of decent journeys so that when you get home if you want to look at an incident then you can download the files and do what you want with it so the first thing to notice with the Accio one is 
it's really got a single floor that one they're one minute files and you might miss the incident that you want on the files but two there's no easy way of just saying right click the button save a specified amount of time of a video because something's just happened there's no easy way of saving it you have to touch the screen and go into i wouldn't say a menu system but there's a couple of presses of the screen and because it's reflective you can't quite see it as easy as you'd like to so it's it's not ideal for actually saving incidents and using them later it's more designed for that automatic you've had a crash and it saves it so the extra usage i found wasn't very useful because I actually couldn't use the video. When I got back home, it had physically overwritten all the files and the incident had gone, so I did not capture that. So my first use of the Accio one was a failure because I couldn't use the video. Most of that's because the SD card I was using wasn't big enough, but also because the interface didn't provide an easy way of saving it. So let's get on to the, the eye dash cam because it's got some differences that are a lot better than the Accio one and it shows what the flaws are with the Accio one and the first thing is you can define whether the video files that loop are one minute three minute or five minutes so from my point of view setting to a five minute file means you're far more likely to capture the actual incident in the file that's playing or recording right now so that seems much better it's the same though that you have to touch the screen, so I can do it here, touch the screen once, and now it's actually digital, and I can see the view on the digital camera, but I can't see it very well. So now I touch it again, and I can press the lock screen, now there's a car coming, and that's exactly the issue that we've got. Leaning forward and touching the screen and playing with it um, to record the file, you shouldn't be doing while you're driving. So that as an interface, I really don't like. It should just be one bold button on the top, press it, done and then it then it actions it. It should be a fast action system on all of these mirror dash cams, but they don't seem to do it. So that's a bit of a weakness. But the th one, three and five minute files, that's much, much better. So you can actually store what you want. And again, when I tested the I1, an incident happened and I could see the video. This one has um, an off button so I can turn the screen off and instead of showing the image of what it, the camera is looking at outside it's now just a reflective mirror so the screen that goes over my mirror is a mirror when the screen is off but if i turn the screen on it's now not a mirror it's showing the actual physical screen of the view forwards the eye camera and dash cam seems better from its settings it also has settings to calibrate the g-force that triggers the automatic saving of the files now when i set it to its lowest level so it would um, record more files it actually started recording things just on the sharp acceleration from the electric car so because you really do get a bolt in the back with these electric cars especially this electric mini um, that was enough g-force to trigger the dash cam to save files so i was getting all sorts of protected videos thinking why why is it saved it but of course it was just acceleration so I've toned that G-Force setting down a little bit more. So it's not on the highest, not on the lowest, it's on the mid setting, and that seems better. The Accio one doesn't have any settings for that. So you either have a major incident or it doesn't save anything. The eye dash cam seems better from my perspective, even though it's cheaper, even though it doesn't have the hard wiring kit, even though it doesn't have a 360 camera. So that seems to be the problem with dash cams. It's, it's using the video. Now, even with the five minute video loop, um, the incident that I had that I showed you a little while ago, I looked at whether to submit that to the Lincolnshire police, but they required a minute before and a minute after the incident on the video. Now I had the minute before, but I didn't have the minute after, which is a, which is a great shame because the actual quality of the video is really, really good. So I'll, I'll show you on the screen now a video that I shot using the Accio 360. But what I had to do to get this video was translate the TS dot file using my laptop computer into an MP4 file. So each one minute file has to be converted manually on the computer, or I think you can do them in batches. But there's a painful process of um, selecting the part of the video you want. Because it's a 360 video, how does it know whether you want to see out of the left-hand image, the right-hand image, or what's up or what's down? It's You have to select the angle that you want and then extract that into a file. So there's an extra process to go through, whereas 
the, the, the I one, that's just MP4 or movie files. Um, you can use those directly for video editing. So I found that the I one much easier to use for the video content afterwards. But the actual quality of the video, here's a video from the 360 camera of the Accio dash cam. As you can see, it's much wider. I can see some of the dash um, and the actual image of the screen is a lot less. So what I can see outside, the outside view, what I'm supposed to be looking at, I can see a lot less of, and that's because of the angle of the camera. Now, obviously I could zoom in, but then I'd lose some of the quality. But the content's there and it's pretty good. It's a pretty good um, image. The, the eye one, is very different. Um, it's definitely more like a dash cam, it's right at the front, so what it's actually seeing is just the image outside, it's not seeing anything on inside the car, and there's no editing to be done to utilise this image, so here's a video, it's a 1060p, it's not the highest resolution it does, because it does do 4K, or is it 2.5K? I can't quite remember, but there's a higher resolution setting um, than this, but 1080p um, is pretty good. Now this image quality, um, you know, one of the issues is, can you see the registration number? And that uh, BMW 1 Series, that was doing at least 80-ish, um, overtaking that cycle. I can actually see the registration number. It's a little bit blurry, but it, it was moving at 80, and I was doing at least 50, 55. So we're talking about a closing speed of 135 miles an hour, and the frame rate still caught. Um, the image of the car so that I could tell what the registration number is. So I was quite impressed with that on the lower resolution as well. As a dash cam that captured images for whether you have an accident, I reckon the Accio one is probably the best because of the 360 camera capturing so much more detail. So from the point of view of a dash cam for what it's supposed to be used for, the Accio one is probably a little bit better. If all you want to capture is if you have an accident, the, the i1, the settings make it much more conducive to using the video later and much more ordinary, like an ordinary camera. So that's why the, uh, the, the i1 is still on my car. Another really minor feature between the Accio and the, the i1 is the 12 volt socket charger. So the power comes from the, you know, the cigarette lighter, the 12 volt socket at the bottom of the car down here. That's what powers both of them. But the, the i1, has a USB connector out of it as well. So you plug it in and it's powering your dash cam, but you can then plug a USB into it to get some power out as well. Whereas the Accio one takes the 12 volt socket and then doesn't give you the ability to use it for another USB. So the, the i1 you know, wins again. It just seems to have the more useful features, the more practical features. Um, you can also take pictures. So I can turn the video off Oops, that's to settings, I didn't want that. I can go over to, oh, I'm on 2.5K now, so I'm not quite sure what I've done. All right, so that's video off. Now I can go to the camera. So I don't know if you can hear that on camera, but it's giving a camera taking sound. So it's 2.5K camera images. So I can also swing the camera around and I can take some pictures. So here's one I took earlier while we're on holiday. Uh, and it's pretty good quality, I'm quite impressed. So the both the cameras have that facility so you can take images. But there are lots of other options within the camera for, you know, if you've had the crash and you're in the car, then you can start recording manually. So you can record the incident of what's happening around you. There's all sorts of extra things that you can do with these dash cams. There's parking facilities, so when you're parked, if it's hardwired, will it still record what's going on in your car and around the car while you're not there? They both have those facilities. The, the i1 seems to have more features for that, and uh, I like the software options for it. The Accio one has it, but just didn't seem as intuitive to use and set up. So my thought process, let's summarize. Um, can I use the dash cam for videos like this video that I'm doing right now? And the answer is no, um, because the audio is not, not great. It records it, 
but it's just nowhere near good enough to be able to use on a video and send out. So I can't use it with audio, but is the video content itself any good? I mean, it's okay from looking out of the windscreen and seeing what I'm driving, but looking back at me and recording me talking there doesn't seem a lot of point if I've got to record the audio as well I might as well have a camera like this one set up over here or um, have one set up on the dash looking back with um, a microphone on it so I really don't see the point of using the dash cam for video content for me so for me I'm not gonna be able to do what I want what I will try I'll try doing it the other way around trying to use an action cam and see whether I can use it as a dash cam but at the moment, it's been a failure from my point of view, but I have learned about dash cams and I've learned how they work. And I think, I think I'll leave it on because there's always that random chance you're gonna capture something and have that as a usable piece of video. So the, the i1, which is now installed with 128 gigabyte SD card, I will actually um, keep this on here and keep using it. So do I recommend either of these? Well, I've got to say, based on the features and its usability, I definitely recommend the, the i dash cam that I'm using here, the mirror one. But if what you're after is just a dash cam to record accidents, and you really like the idea of the 360 camera and having greater visibility, or you want all these three extra cameras and the GPS settings, definitely this Accio one does absolutely everything. And this is a picture from the Accio 360 camera, and as you can see, it really does record quite a lot of detail. If you've got a dash cam in your car, let me know the make and model and how you're getting on with it and whether it's any good or not. Really am interested in the variety of dash cams out there. Thank you so much for watching, especially to the end. I know I rabble on a little bit in these videos, but uh, I hope there was something there enjoyable or useful to you. And uh, come back for more videos on solar panels, home storage batteries, portable batteries as well. I'll be testing a couple more of those soon. And uh, electric car journeys, more with the mini electric as well. And hopefully test drives, we're still looking for our second EV. So there's still some more cars to test. Thanks for watching. See you again soon. Bye for now.